Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and just a quick video today on using a sync await with the Fetch API. So uh, the reason for today's video is because uh, the Fetch API is probably the most commonly used JavaScript function which takes advantage of promises. Therefore, you can quite easily simplify and clean up your code by using a sync await instead of a bunch of dot thens when it comes to using promises. So I do assume you have some some sort of prior knowledge, uh, sorry, uh, knowledge in using uh, the Fetch API. If not, I've got plenty of videos on doing so if you want to check those out. But let's now take a look at a quick example of using a sync await with the Fetch API. Um, so inside the text editor right here, I've got this index.html file and I've linked up this main.js file. I've also got right here a users.json file inside the data directory containing a few users. Okay, so let's go inside the main.js and we're going to be defining an asynchronous function to load our users. Okay, so right here we can say async function and call this load users. Okay, so this one right here is going to return our array of users. Okay, so uh, we can Quite simply now, because we've actually, uh, because we've specified this right here as being async, we can now take advantage of the await keyword. Okay, so using await, we're able to wait until a promise has been settled. So for example, we can say const uh, uh, response is equal to, then we can say await, then pass through here fetch. We're going to be fetching, of course, data forward slash users dot json just like that okay so now if i was to console.log um, response just like that um, we should now see uh, the response object that came from the fetch result okay so this right here is the equivalent of doing this fetch data users dot json once again then saying dot then then having the response inside here so this right here, as we can see, um, uh, it's obviously three lines long compared to one line. And of course, um, it is arguably a lot cleaner using a wait right here. Okay, so let's just console.log the response. And we're also going to be saying just down here, document.addEvent listener as soon as the DOM content has loaded. So basically, as soon as the document is ready to go, we're going to also run this async function because we need to essentially load our data. So we're going to be saying right here, try. Then we can say const data is equal to await. Then we can say load users. You know what? Let's call this one users. Okay. Now you know what? I might actually I might actually just say up here let users equal to an empty array just like that. Then I can just reassign the value of users. Then I can grab the error if there was one, and I can simply say console.log error. Okay. Then I can just say log once again and then log out the actual error message. Then lastly I can say console.log. Then we can pass through users right here. So now, once the document has loaded, this right here is going to run. I can save this and refresh, and we have something like this. As we can see, we have undefined as the users, because of course, we haven't actually returned anything from this function just yet, but we have right here the response object. Now, of course, the advantage of having your, um, you know, a separate function for retrieving users is that you can actually go inside here, you can check the properties, you can check all of these things before proceeding and possibly put some logic inside there. Okay, so moving on to converting the data to be JSON, it's quite straightforward. Let's go back inside here. We're going to then say const users is equal to await then response.json. This right here is the exact same thing that is happening. We're simply awaiting the promise for converting the data to JSON or parsing it as JSON. Then we can just simply down here return our users. Now once again, because we have uh, because we have this separate function, we can quite easily go inside here. We can do stuff with the users. Uh, we can manipulate 
we can check things, etc. Um, but in our case, I just want to return the users. So now we should see right here console log users. This is going to return a promise because, of course, it is asynchronous. So I can just save this and refresh, and we get right here our users. Okay, now what if there was an error with the parsing of JSON? So, for example, let's go inside here, let's uh, add some random character at the top here, so for example, the character symbol. Let's save this and refresh, and now we can see that we have caught the error using a sync await, and of course the error message is just right there. So of course here, that try catch is working perfectly fine. So obviously, um, you may want to put your error handling inside here, it's up to you. Personally, I like to keep these functions lean as possible, therefore I'm handling it inside the main um, area right down here. Let's put this back to normal and cover one last topic. So that is going to be making this even shorter. So if you don't care about manipulating or checking your data, you can quite simply have a one-liner for returning this information. We can say right here, return, then we can say await, fetch, once again, passing through data, users.json, just like that, then we can say dot json okay so here we are essentially we are awaiting the fetch results okay so right here this will be the response object then we are returning the promise for the dot json okay so now with this uh, with this promise being returned we are then awaiting the results of that parse json right down here therefore once this, is, uh, once this has been fulfilled or settled, we have the users and of course we move on. So now saving this and refreshing, we can see we get the exact same result right there. And of course, alongside that, the error handling is still going to work. Let's save this error, refresh, and now we get the error right there. So um, that is how to use async await with the fetch API. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.